People always say that TF2 gets progressively worse as more and more updates are released, but is that really true? I find it hard to tell, especially given how much nostalgia can play into it. So in this video, I invented time travel. Welcome to 2007. No backpack, no trading, no unlocks, no hats, no auto reload, no air blast, and no taunt kills. No crosshairs, you're only allowed to use the default ones, and you're not allowed to change the color or scale of it either. Soldier used to have 36 reserve ammo for the rocket launcher, and for the demo, 40 and 30 respectively. Here is where it starts to get weird. It turns out that the absolutely most difficult thing in game development is designing a fucking gas canister. First of all, yes it still bleeds. In TF2's first trailer, released July 2006, the canister was all black with a smaller yellow canister. The second trailer released August 2006, and here it's completely yellow. What's even weirder is that if you look at the class icon next to the health, the pyro has a completely black canister. This isn't really a big deal on its own, but for whatever reason, the blue pyro then has a completely yellow one, as well as no class icon on its arm badge. The model itself and the render of the pyro and the class selection is as it is today though. I'm fairly certain that we jump subtly higher in today's TF2 than before. I compared jumping in 2007 TF2 and today's TF2 on Dust Bowl with the exact same coordinates and view angle. Comparing the jump onto the bench in the 2 fort spawn does seem to doubly confirm jump heights were raised, though I can't help but feel like there must be something I'm missing because there's no way they would mess up something so integral to the basic movement of the game, especially since there's no reason for them to change it. An interesting note, the only two health packs on this version of 2 Fort are the ones in the sewers as well. Thankfully though, this incredibly distracting and immersion breaking feature of the game was changed. Every class previously used the same set of fall damage responses, so sometimes the heavy will make this really pathetic girly yelp when his legs hurt. They eventually just removed this entirely, so for the longest time, there was only the licked crunch sound. But somewhat recently, they decided to make taking fall damage trigger the intense hurt response. If you hold down primary fire, the pistol starts mocking you for your shit APM. You need to spam left click for it to actually fire at a usable rate. Even weirder, the sniper SMG was identical to how it is today. So why is the pistol like this? For the spy, the shimmer effect when you bump into people would still happen in third person, but your view models wouldn't shimmer. Disguising as a spy also used to not include the paper mask. This next one is baffling. I don't understand how TF2 was ever played like this, but sticky bombs used to only ever disappear when they were either detonated or when the demo man dies. If you shot at it with hitscan, it simply bounced around. Since demo was clearly still not powerful enough, pipes also used to not hurt the demo man at point blank. Uber charge doesn't drain when you switch to another weapon. Combined with the Uber saw, this would have been insanely game breaking, and medics would honestly be better off opting to go cut people down than heal. The speed at which the medic is allowed to toggle Uber on himself is ridiculous. It's essentially instant. So you wouldn't need to predict when projectiles are fired. You would switch to the medigun on reaction to the projectile being fired. Burst fire hit scan could counter this, but as the medic, you could do a variety of quick swapping to bait shots and other mind games. There's also this. There is, however, a small limit to how fast you're allowed to switch between weapons, and that window of time is long enough for continuous fire weapons like the minigun to damage you. But if you aren't playing heavy, what are you supposed to do about this? Out of curiosity, I timed if you could give a target more uber if you switched weapons, and how much uber you would get if you did the hyper switch.
Flashing used to have no penalty as well. As it is currently, each flash doubles the rate at which your uber is currently consumed. With no penalty, you could very feasibly flash your entire team through a choke point and still have plenty to spare. What really surprised me was that the engineer could only upgrade the sentry gun. You were stuck with this pretty worthless dispenser and this super slow teleporter. And finally, the absolute dumbest thing I've ever seen in TF2. How this made it into launch is just mind blowing. First of all, they did end up changing the knife's mechanics. 2007 backstab has a small delay before the melee attack goes through. Backstabbing today happens as soon as you click. You were, however, allowed to cloak any time during the knife's attack animation. So you could cloak away as soon as your target died, but watch this. Okay, you cloaked immediately after knifing the air, so what? What the fuck is this? After nine years in development, Gabe N 